Guys, there's a sea of red out there. Tons of stocks are down. They plummeted in the last hour of trading. You can easily attach it to one thing, the Fed. The Fed did not raise rates, which was expected. But the things they said next are what caused the problem. What was the problem? Everyone thought that the Fed would start cutting rates in March. We talked about it in a video or two ago. People were expecting seven rate cuts in the eight meetings this year. We were like, wow, is that really likely? Is it possible? Of course it's possible. At the end of the day, what matters? Inflation is what's going to matter. Core inflation fell big time last month. Made me think to myself, okay, maybe we're closer to Fed rate cuts than we thought. But look at all this red. Amazon, Google, Microsoft. Google was down 7.3% piggybacking off of yesterday's bad earnings. And by bad earnings, they beat on revenue, they beat on profit. But their ad revenue wasn't as good as expected. Guys, it's not always going to be better than expected. To me, if you like Google, you need to be contemplating, do I want to buy more shares right now? And the only reason you shouldn't is because something has fundamentally changed in Google. And frankly, I don't think anything's fundamentally changed in Google. That's my opinion. But look at all this red out here, guys. Apple down 1.5%. NVIDIA down 2%. All these, look at this. AT&T up 1% today. Good for you, AT&T. Boeing up 5.5%. Wow, the company that cannot keep planes in the air up 5.5% today. CCL and RCL, Carnival Cruise Line and Royal Caribbean up, up today. Airbnb down 3.5%. Airbnb is a company I'm watching from the standpoint of, I don't know how they justify their valuations. So guys, the sea of red happened. I want everybody to remember something that's going to be very, maybe different than what other people are saying. You should not want lower rates. I'm going to repeat that one more time. You should not want lower interest rates. And here is why. If you're a good investor, if you're a good employee, lower rates makes it harder for you to stand out. Lower rates makes everybody feel like they're incredible. Now, again, that's not a very common thing you hear. But if you're a good investor, you want less competition for your investments. Because if everybody, every you know, Dick and Jane out there is buying stocks. How do you stand out? If you're a good worker, if you're a good employee, but unemployment rate's very low, you're competing against idiots for a raise. Everybody and their mother can get a raise. That's not going to let you stand out. If you're a conservative person and want cash on the sideline as an emergency fund or to pay down your mortgage, guess what you're doing? You're getting nothing at 0%. You're getting 5 5 5.5% at current rates. And the big kicker of it all, for them to cut rates, I don't think it's just an inflation thing. It's a recession thing. For them to cut rates, I believe it has to be a recession is on the horizon or right there. That's the concern you have to remember. That the story will change about the economy. Companies will report less revenue growth, less profit, and less profit growth. Do you really want that? Don't forget, we had how many companies taking on debt over the last 10 or 15 years with ultra low rates? Those have not started to refinance yet. At some point, it's going to drive down some profit. The goal is, the hope is, that profit will jump up enough in enough time that when they refinance those, those low-interest loans they took and debt offerings they had, it's going to be able to be overcome by the growth in profit. But guys, lower rates means things are probably not going well. I don't believe it's lower rates just because inflation is lower. The, the Fed has two mandates. Price stability, which is inflation, keeping it down, and full employment. We're, no, no, we're nowhere close to full employment. We're at 3.7% unemployment right now. Full employment somewhere in the mid-5 range. That's 1.8%. That's over 2 million more people they want unemployed. And you heard me correctly. They want unemployed. Because it's, it's hard for inflation. It's high for inflation if we have everybody working. And it's hard for businesses to find good people. And it rewards people who are not good employees. When there is low inflation, everybody's able to get a job because demand is so high for workers. And Fed Chairman Powell specifically said that today. And for a second there, the market started to rebound, and then it took another nosedive. The Nasdaq finished down over 2.2%, the worst day since, since September of 2023. Why? Because people are like, wait a second, we thought we'd have rate cuts in March. Guys, newsflash, I don't think that's happening. I could be wrong. If all of a sudden... Like the Fed, they see the data come out and they're like, holy cow, look at all this. All of a sudden, unemployment started to stick up. All of a sudden, inflation came down even further. Maybe they do start cutting rates. I don't know. But to me, they're not going to cut rates because the news is good. 
They're going to cut rates because the news is bad. I don't think they're just going to cut rates to cut rates. They want to slow down this economy. They want to absolutely slow it down. And that might be weird to hear, but you've got to remember that inflation is worse for people. Now, the worst thing that happens is deflation. That means prices are going down. If that happens, they're going to pump that. They're going to drop those rates so fast to get prices higher. Absolutely. But guys, we came off of a very, very low 20-year period of inflation. We had a 40-year period of lowering interest rates. And when did we decrease it? When did we decrease interest rates? Mostly during recessionary times to spur the economy. Now, that could be different. I didn't believe we were going to have a soft landing. Feeling pretty soft right now. I don't know what's going to happen, but it looks pretty soft right now. I think it's even surprising um, Fair Chairman Powell. Guys, our goal here is to remind you that these are stories along the way. Think about the last one year, two years, three years, four years. Guys, four years ago, we, were, we, were, we still hadn't reached COVID yet. Four years ago, COVID was still, uh, wait a second, what's this thing popping up? And the world changed. And guess what? Markets are 50% higher than they were back then, almost 50% higher. That's what you need to remember. That's what we're here to teach. Guys, to go back to Google, let's pull up our software here because I want to show you Google and how it got affected. Look at this. Google was down 7.35%, okay? Look at, its, look at its low here, 52-week low. Less than a year ago, $88.86. The story here is a lot different than the story at 141. A lot different. But remember, look at this cash flow. $77.6 billion. These are the things I want you to learn by following our channel. You're going to learn that the story follows the stock price. The news follows the stock price, not the other way around. So when the stock starts to fall, the news is going to follow that. Guys, this is still a great company with great gross profit of 56%, great bottom line profit of low 20s, and getting better. This company that owns Google.com and YouTube.com, the very website you're on right now. This should be an opportunity for people. If you like Google at 150, why the heck are you not buying it today? You might have some reason, but remember, we're trying to separate the story. Guys, I don't care where stocks go. The lower they go, the better it is. It gives you an opportunity to buy great companies. And guess what? Cash flow will probably fall, but the stock will fall much further. That's the big difference. And by the way, if the cash flow does fall, it's going to be temporary with a company like Google. There's a lot of companies out there that their fundamentals get better even though the stock falls. And it'll be, in, it'll be absolutely imperative for you to be able to say, okay, let me remember what Michael Paul told me. Michael Paul said, separate the company from the stock price. I'm buying a piece of a business. I'm buying a piece of cash flow. Let's say hypothetically, I'm hoping for this to happen. Google stock goes to 70 and the free cash flow goes to 100. Guys, I'm looking at this, $100 billion in free cash flow with a stock at 70. Why would you not be jumping all over that? But guess what? There'll be people out there who say, yeah, but Google, and they'll insert some stories to why it justifies 70 or lower. So I want you to remember all of these things that I say, because the market has gone against me for a while. I have been wrong for a while, according to the Mr. Market, and I'm fine with that. But there'll be a time when that flips when everybody's telling the story of the world is ending or stocks are dead. And I'm telling you, you can buy these great companies at great prices. Guys, Google is one of the stocks I am targeting this year to buy. We did another video on the five stocks that I'm looking at. Watch that right now.